if meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Bismillah. Okay. Bismillah. Bismillah. Hello. Salam. Welcome all to part two of our book launch for the wonderful Kaleidoscope of Stories Anthology. Thank you for joining us today. It's the first publication of the publisher Lotri Press and of its editor, Rabia Saida Spiker. She has curated and distilled the voices of 80 poets from around the world, all Muslim poets. Some, quite several of them you're going to hear tonight, and uh, some of them are established poets in their own right. Others are uh, first time you'll be hearing voices tonight. So it's a really special occasion. We're witnessing, I think, a real cultural moment. Uh, the, the anthology has already received great reviews. Uh, an important reviewer said that it was an important contribution to poetry and a powerful contribution to poetry. So I think you guys are going to have a great evening. Uh, for those of us who are Muslim, it is actually quite a, a moment of some honor uh, and a, a sacred moment, I think. Um, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said Islam should be a beauty mark in this world. And I really think this book is that. It's a, a thing of great beauty. I hope you'll appreciate the same after tonight. Um, so thank you. Thank you for coming and supporting Lotri. And I'm going to speak afterwards, after the event, about where you can get the book and more about Lotri's future projects. So, so stay tuned for that. Now I'm going to hand over to our Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Abbas Muhammad. He has very kindly hosting our book launch tonight on his Gamma platform, The Gathering of Muslim Artists, of which he is a co-founder. He's also a poet. You may have heard him in our part one of our book launch. Um, and we're really relying on his generosity and uh, technical knowledge tonight. We also have our co-host, Sukina Pilgrim. Some of you may know her if you're already aware of Muslim Poet Voices. She is, in fact, a well-known poet and playwright and spoken word artist. She's had uh, work that's been shown on ITV, Channel 4, BBC, Al Jazeera. Um, she's also part of the hip hop duo Poetic Pilgrimage. So we're really honored, uh, Sakina, that you're going to be hosting tonight. Um, I'm going to hand over to these guys and I will see you afterwards. Have a lovely evening. Take care. Jazakallah khair. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Asma. And me and Abbas are extremely excited and, and enthusiastic about the potential of what this event means, right? Would you agree, Abbas? Oh, yeah. So stoked. I mean, these are all poets who are writing in the English language. We've had mm -hmm. such a great tradition of poets in different languages that have been translated. But to have people actually writing from their heart in English so that we can consume that in English is just making it a lot more accessible. It's a really unique project. Absolutely, and definitely a mark of us as British speaking Muslims or English speaking Muslims, right? We're making our mark on the world now. We've got Islamic poetry in Malay and Urdu and Arabic and Swahili, but now the English speaking Muslims are, are making themselves known, which is incredible, I think. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so I'm going to introduce our first uh, poet of the evening. So we have Idris Mears, who was born in Cornwall, um, and he moved with, with his parents to Bahrain. Um, and then he went on to read English at Oxford University, mashallah, and entered Islam in 1973. He's traveled the breadth of the Muslim world since then, building up a, a network of contacts and a catalog of experiences. As a teenager, he wrote poetry and won a National Poetry Prize. Um, you know, so he won a National Poetry Prize as well. So we're really honored and really happy to have you here, Brother Idri. So please take take the stage. alaikum. So I'll just read the poems and uh, then I'll leave you because it's very late at night where I am. And it's definitely past my, I'm turning into a pumpkin very soon. So I'm going to read two poems from the anthology. Uh, the first one is called Perfection. And uh, the second one, they're both in a sense a theme. They're, they're relating, even though I'm now in uh, United Arab Emirates in Dubai, 
these are very much English poems that are drawing upon English imagery. Just as plants need the right soil and water and light and the right testing of frost and drought, the age of the perfectly nurtured body in the perfect garden is 33 when the glow of youth meets settled maturity. And until we reach the age of 40, we don't have the fortitude to be perfectly at ease with ourselves. And white hairs at 60 give us dignity without airs. And if not perfectly stupid, we start to be a little bit wise. And at 80, all that is forgivable is forgiven. And the age of the perfected soul is whatever time it takes to face death with, a, with no regrets. And the second poem is called, uh, actually, I, I, it, I broke my back today, shoveling a trench in clay. And now I know what clods we sons of Adam are, lumpy and cloying, as common as muck, stuck in the mud sods, resisting the workman's spade, weighed down with the elemental rain that won't drain away, clinging to the souls with a dead hand, needing artisan hands to knead us on the slab, shape us on the wheel, anoint us with glaze, fire us in the kiln, make us useful, maybe even beautiful. And with that, I'll leave you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah and jazakallah for, for sharing Hajj Idris. I know you have to go. I wish we could have you for a few more moments. That was just beautiful. Um, thank you so much for, for pouring your love into your poetry and pouring your poetry onto our humble live stream. Jazakallah khair. And uh, it is an honor of mine to introduce our next poet. Uh, Arthur Skip Maselli lives with his two teen children in Northern Virginia near Washington, DC. He is an initiate on the Mevlevi path of Sufism with Sheikh Kabir Helminski. He's got a couple of books, uh, Sparrow Who Ate the Universe, 25 Words Towards the Truth. Definitely check out these books. They can be obtained through most major book outlets. Um, and he also blogs occasionally at phosphorimental.com. So I'm sure you're gonna enjoy uh, his words, and if you want more of his words, that is where you can find them. Uh, he's also a part-time student of the NAE, a triathlete, a businessman, and an event organizer. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, he does it all. Salam alaikum. Skip, please uh, uh, come on to the stage. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Um, the first uh, two poems I am going to read to you are only in the kaleidoscope of stories. The first poem uh, is a longer poem and it is called uh, The Cloaked Lovers. And it explores how and who it is we love when we truly love. Her eyes are knitting needles, my heart, her design, her words are golden gossamer threads, sewn into a cloak as clandestine, invisible as a spider's web, dusted with dew and tangled light. We slip away like moon and stars as dawn arrives to restore our sight. And she reveals the secret that he is in all ways everywhere, wherever we always are. Oh, faint fever, feel this ever curing bond with you the sinuous slips of aloes wood, the interlocking of imagined fingers, the indentation of your proximity upon my soul. This is the tincture of the oud. This love is a crossroad between long and distant highways unseen. 
You are always there, I, sometimes here with her, yet love is where there is not aware of this, dear God. I have become aware. Now I sit in shadows and listen to lovers speak of their encounters. He was touching me, she said. He said he kissed me. Then we woke beneath the sheets. I remained in bed. She made tea in the low angle morning light. All this I saw whilst out of sight. These are simple tales and plaints. We speak posies into the solitude, you and I, Lord. Lovers like these say, I, you, touched your, my soul. You, I, kiss my, your heart. We, you, wake in quiet moments. Sight lingers behind my eyes in shallow truths. I dip this porous cup into the ocean of my heart, to where your rivers flow carrying the sweetness in the sunlight through the valleys of the dark, spilling love along the path as we go. We sip tea now, Mustafa and me. Oh, beloved, how we two speak posies. If there were but only one star in an empty night, I'd be able to imagine it disappearing. I'd worry, perhaps, but why? For you are every star in this star-filled sky. You are the arc of my eyes leap, from one star spire to the other, I'll navigate in infinite circles if I must, but it will take a billion disappearing stars one after another into dust for you to go dark. But they are always in your sight wherever they are. Send my eyes to the gallows. Banish me from my city walls. Muhammad was left by flesh and angels alike, orphan time again and again. The silk road of love travels away from the heart. And yet this same road is the unpaved path going in and in and in. What trail can the feet follow when the flesh is shed, when the mother and father are dead, when the uncle has left, when the tribe is cleft, when from the cave you fled longing for the message to follow, as the messenger said, taken in by gypsies left for alms, bodies dance with open palms, one up, one down, I, the center axis, you, where all reality collapses into a single point, a single unity of being, and love is the synapsis. This heart is a star in my beloved sky, not an earthbound beacon. The former follows her an eternity. The latter eventually disappears. Love is all that is left of me. As a body poisoned with death, it slips away like a shell with every soul dislodging breath evermore, evermore, within the extinguished body is the spirit's secret cure. So, my last poem is shorter and it's called, uh, It Was the Last Hour. And if we poets wait for a poem that reveals the truth within us before we write it, we will never write a single word. Now is the last hour of the year's last day. Here is the cloud mid mottled midnight sky, diaphanous gun smoke gray, something craving light as faint as far away. Soft moon specter, loosened veil, can you not even seduce a poem? Can no winter air hold my breath, cradled in this town of pale, pretty abodes of emptiness? These nights I am a bone dry quill, Aloft in windless restlessness, the branches bereft of leaves tease my chaste silence into blushing breathlessness. This empty page, my jealous mistress. Ten thousand starlings murmuration mimic spring and summer songs. Yet by a lone frenetic peregrine, their sky is split and three moments later, winter has come, then gone, gone. And mystic ciphers turn the many spired stars, while love assembles secrets in the mirror of those endless silver eyes. Clues that disclose the senseless demarcation of time. Hush, dear one, hamosh. There is no hurry in summing this up in metered rhyme. Shukriya, shukran, tasakura, merci, dear friends, assalamu alaikum, and thank you again, Rabia and Abbas, for your work today.
Thank you so much, um, Arthur Skip, for reading us that poetry. It was very mes mesmerizing, not just the content of the words, but the, the tone and the, the rhythm in which you recite. So thank you so much for sharing with us today. Next up, we have Rashida James Sadia who is a cultural educator and a multidisciplinary artist invested in transforming social perceptions through creative literature. Her work explores migration, identity, and the transmission of spirituality and cultural memory amongst Muslim women in West Africa and the American South. In addition, she is the arts and culture editor for Sapello Square, which is a digital hub documenting the experience and legacy of Black Muslims in America. So Sister Rashida, I really look forward to hearing from you. Take it away. Assalamualaikum. It's an honor to be included in this virtual gathering, but more importantly, to be connected with other human beings who are using words to craft more beauty and light in the world. I'll be sharing two pieces from the anthology. The first one is heirloom. Somewhere, there are tears and bombs rupturing the beauty of sacred land. Somewhere, there are boats filled with people carrying nothing except the gift of breath. Somewhere, there are fathers using every inch of their bodies to pull their children across borders for the comfort of safety. Somewhere, the sun has left its place and there is only my grandmother. For when the sky is full of darkness and the world is asleep, she sits alone and prays, Ya Allah, Surely you are the best of weavers. Weave a song among us, a joyous song of love upon our lips so that we may leave the sorrows of this world for the mercy of your wisdom. By the setting of the stars, my soul is a wanderer in search of the true purpose of my feet. Please show us the way. Help us to walk with certainty despite the spread of darkness. It is by your labor and mercy that we exist. Though the world may injure our bodies, it is you who preserves the soul. Remind us, help us to turn the soil with our hands, to plant something better, to mend our bones, to purify our hearts in oceans made of compassion and infinite love. Ya Allah, give us more than we deserve. For somewhere there are broken hearts waiting for a new song, a joyous song, one that removes sorrows from bones, one that guides our bodies into vessels capable of healing this world. The last piece that I'll share is called Thankfulness of the Tongue. In the middle of the night, when you need God most, may the sky unfold and pull you closer. May the ache of uncertainty drift away and the ocean within your chest spill from your eyes. For wherever there is darkness, there is light, and wherever there is light, there are angels waiting patiently to hold your hand so that you may know the beauty of heaven and earth, the tenderness of wisdom by the moon which brightens and the pen that shall record. Let it be written in bone and marrow, stitched in the breath of patience and prayer. Be certain of nothing except the existence of God. For every star is a prophecy. May you be a descendant of light. May the thread of faith run through your hands. May your prayers be heard and your voice raised in gratitude. May your feet be firmly planted and guided only by the way of love. May you walk with those who embody grace. And whenever you are lost, may this path bring you home again and again. In the middle of the night, when you need God most, may the sky unfold and pull you closer. Shukran. And thank you for listening. Jazakallah khair for sharing that beautiful poetry. Um, I'm very excited to next up announce Dr. Alan Abdul Haq Godless. And I have my book right here. You all should also check out the book, definitely get the book. And I'm reading along. So if you want to be reading along, he's going to be reading Paradise which is on page 94. Um, Dr. Abdul Haq is Associate Professor of Religion at the University of Georgia, where he co-directs the Islamic Studies, uh, Bachelor's, Master's, and PhD programs. He was also included in the 500 Most Influential Muslims in the World, 2009 through 2012. 
Uh, we are very honored to have him. He discovered Islam through Sufism and has been guided at times by the Chishti, the Nimutullahi, the Maryami, the Naqshbandi, and the Shadli Sufi orders. Uh, I'm very, very excited and honored to introduce him to the stage. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sidi Abdul Haq. Assalamu alaikum. Audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Old timers like myself know that this event would have been impossible without the groundbreaking, tireless work over his lifetime of our dear departed friend, Daniel Abdul Moore. While fuqaha, scholars, sheikhs, and imams were feeding people's need for fiqh and ilm, Abdul Hai knew that the hearts of English speaking Muslims were still imprisoned, starving, and aching. Fortunately, he had the vision that one day folks would appreciate his gift of poetry as a forgotten key leading their hearts from the darkness into the light. May he eternally be bathed in oceans of God's merciful love, rahimahullah. So I would like to dedicate this reading of mine, this reading of this poem of paradise to him. Paradise, even more beauty, more love, more truth, more justice, more life, more love, more joy, more blessedness than you can ever imagine. Go for it now. Deep down, you've always hungered to be filled to be bathed, every fiber, every cell of your being. You've always hungered to be saturated with paradise. You who are God's lowly, poor servant, you deserve nothing, yet you do deserve paradise. Set the bar that high and higher still. Reach for it now, since now is the only time you can choose to reach for it. But beware, after the flood of honeymoon awe will come the demons, the demons of disappointments, heartaches, and broken trusts, the demons of unmet yearnings past. Never again will I open my heart to such suffering, you said. And so you resigned yourself, you settled, you contented yourself with a shack in the middle of the desert of your life. No running water of love, only a few drops here and there, enough to get by, but at least the gaping wounds were shut. So many days went by, so many years, but now your hovel scheduled for bulldozing, perhaps today, perhaps next month, next year. Do you remember the nightingale? Can you still hear its song? You are no longer the lost bleeding child, the lost bleeding child you once were, alone, with just the shards of your shattered dreams slicing through your heart. 
Now you can see that we're what once were only fragments of glass, ripped flesh, crimson corpuscles, and shrieks knifing through the darkness. Now you can see that there has always been there your beloved's face, which even now is your beloved embracing you. So if you remember even a note of the nightingale's memory, if you remember even a note of the nightingale's melody, if you can still taste the fragrance of the rose, if you can still taste the fragments of the jasmine, let them rekindle the longing. You are of age now. You can come into this tavern. The door is wide open. You know that you can sit at a well-worn corner of the bar and sip one drop one ache at a time. You know there is nothing here but your beloved inviting you to this ancient tango, inviting you to paradise. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah khair for these beautiful, beautiful words. May we all meet up at the tavern and our bowls filled up with the beloved wine of, of the beloved. Uh, Jazakallah for the beautiful poem. Um, the next poet, I am very, very honored to introduce. You already heard her bio, such as Kina Pilgrim, so I can't repeat the bio. I have to say something completely different, I must tell you that Sakina Pilgrim is someone who is an inspiration, uh, who has paved the way for many. Uh, she is an amazing poet, playwright, but more than that, her heart is a heart of gold. And when she praises the Prophet Sallallahu I can see, I can learn how truly to fill your heart with love for the Prophet Sallallahu I really look up to her a lot and very honored um, to introduce her to the stage to be sharing some poetry as well. So she's Sakina Pilgrim, Salaam Alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Oh, brother Abbas, mashallah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to read two poems today. Um, I decided to read a poem which I wasn't planning to read um, because it didn't necessarily have a religious theme. But I think sometimes as Muslims, we sometimes forget that it's okay to have human experiences and human emotions. So I guess this is a poem about that. It's called Sunday. <clears throat> One, it's okay to welcome the darkness. Let her walk beside you, sleep at the end of your bed, be the scarf upon your head. It is okay to be silent as she speaks. I get that you fear her, but I need you to hear her. Look into her inky eyes and lean into the discomfort, the itchy reality of uncertainty. Rest a while. Two, not every day will gift gift you with clear skies and a warming sun. The rains will come often and you will run for cover, dripping, shivering and wet. Sometimes the sky will cry for you on the days you don't have the strength to cry for yourself. And when the water has settled into newly moistened earth, you will jump into puddles just to feel alive. Three, sometimes loneliness will be your companion, will show up at your door unannounced and walk straight in before you have a chance to welcome her. She knows you don't really want her there, but she has work to do. She has come to undo you. Four, sometimes you'll feel spiky and antisocial and you'll fight to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's okay to have off days, days when you can't bend your back to make everyone feel comfortable. Five, Sometimes you'll wish the universe would be silent for a second so you can roll down the windows, sink into the back seat and swallow the sunset with your eyes. Six, someday you'll learn it's okay to be exactly as you are with no apology or disclaimer or second guessing or justifying. Seven, someday. 
Thank you. Um, and the final poem I'm going to read is a poem called Medina Bai is Calling. And Medina Bai is a Sufi village in West Africa. Here, here we lay our prayer rugs on the ground like a picnic blanket and feast on worship. We swallow salawat like grapes, the sweet juice trickles down our throats. Here we sit, swaying gently as his names wash over our bodies. Heaven is our canopy. Heaven is our canopy. The Maghreb sky is transforming into Aisha and there is something so magical in witnessing the first stars arrive. Here, the villagers and travelers alike gather to recite utterances so light they sail to heaven under angelic wings. Our voices weave into a golden tapestry. The breath of the faithful and of the grateful make marks on our hearts that will never leave. Here, our guides glide through the streets like clouds in the sky and rain beauty and piety upon us. Our palms are open, as are our hearts, fertile and fragile, and we never leave empty-handed. Here, I dress like a woman from the Sahara, where the veil is thin between this life and the hereafter. Here. Thank you so much. And once again, thank you to Rabia for making this happen, the hard work and everything that, that she has done, that you have done to bring us all together is, is historic, <laughs> legendary. So thank you so much. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce the next, uh, the next poem or the next poet. This will be um, an audio, so it'll be pre-recorded. Um, her name is Fatima's Hand. So Fatima's Hand is a mother of three small children and a writer usually based in Edinburgh, Scotland. For some time, she was in academia exploring themes in, in Sufi poetry and the notions of spiritual states in the work of Ibn al-Arabi. She has lived and studied across the Middle East, taking epic journeys and meeting with mountains. She is currently living in Medina al Manawara with Mount Uhud as her neighbor, mashallah. Um, so we're going to have the recording now of Fatima's hand. Salamat and greetings to everyone from the foot of Mount Uhud in Medina al Munawwara. I arrived here a couple of weeks ago and I'm still swooning at the fact that the Kindred Mount is my neighbour. Um, thank you, Rabia, for all your efforts with the anthology and for inviting me to share here with so many wonderful poets. So the first poem was really inspired by a beautiful verse penned by the 13th century Andalusian Sufi master poet Ashushtari, or Ashushtari. I just wanted to imagine, as I quite often do with Sufi poetry, what it might be like to be in his shoes for a moment, in that ecstatic state that he was so clearly writing in. So the first line of his poem goes, Al-Hubbu Afnani, and I've translated that and used it as the first line of my poem. The poem's called Shustari's Journey. Love annihilated me. Nothing existed save it. The world imploded and love engulfed me. I became lost, rendered a wanderer, came and went as I pleased into places unimagined. At the mountain valley, ascension was difficult, oxygen finite, hallucinations. I fell onto the icy mountain lake and froze there until the breath of an oryx, Arabian no less, thawed me. Had he also wandered too far? But my questions escaped when we nuzzled forelocks. Intellect resigned when Iris is locked, and I became hooves that circumambulate and found Selma of the hearts. And everything else became the imagined. With faltering, drunken steps, I left the world of images. I left the world of forms, but could not keep the secret. It was manifest to the intoxicated ones standing, swaying, when I returned to the courtyard. Love wove the voices of the singers with a star canopy above until they faded away and only a vestige of their illumined faces remained in the night. Awakened by the ceremonial tea of flowers golden, we sipped, 
dazed by the removal of cares and hatred and separation, for love had obliterated me, seeping into my senses until he was a nothing else. So the second poem is really um, a little peek into the somewhat fragmented inner journeying, somewhat turbulent inner journeying of a young woman seeker, namely myself many years ago, and how the company that she might have kept or might she might keep of dead saints, as well as living ones, might be a hope for saving grace. A, li- a liminal hin- hinterland. The moon in me said sleep. Sleep. It dreamt me into secret gardens of nights, sublime and peach-scented earlobes. I abandoned the gardens intermittently, and the desert crept in, throwing out hinterlands around a vortex. I borrowed to discover colours on the horizon, and subsumed by earthly loves, I became Alice. Then I was rupee. When I was tired, I hid in the verses of Hildegard and the utterances of Rabia on a mat in a sad suburb of Damascus where no jasmines grow. And still you waited, Sidi Muhyiddin, in the dream, pulling me through the wormhole, back to the desert, through the hinterlands, until I arrived again at the secret garden in wretched pain, eyes still closed in sleep, but all ears for the elevated voices pushing into my liver for a seat. And with them arrived exquisite symphonies between the click of a light and the start of a dream, swirling deep as oceans and light as fairy clocks dispersed by a child's breath on a midsummer's gloaming. Thanks for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair for uh, sending us a recording and for sharing the recording um, and uh, and for sharing your poetry. That was really beautiful. And hopefully, if you were watching the live stream, you were able to see the, uh, the really striking image that she shared with us uh, as well. Um, I'm very excited now to introduce our next poet, say the Abdul Wadud Sutherland. He is a British Canadian poet. Uh, he embraced Islam in 2004, receiving the name Abdul Wadud from Sheikh Nazim al Haqqani of the Naqshbandi Tariqa. He turned freelance and married Afifa Imatullah. His poems on the life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was published in 2014. A Sufi novice in Sheikh Effendi's realm is a bilingual Romanian English book that followed shortly after, republished in English only in 2016. A new edition with 30 extra pages is due from Beacon Books with the title, Servant of the Loving One. In 2017, Valley Press publishes monumental new and selected poems covering 45 years of his writing. It was listed by PBS and the Morning Star selected it as one of the year's top 10 books. We are truly, truly, blessed to have, um, uh, to be in his presence, really. And I invite him to the stage, uh, Sidi, to share some poetry. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. The first poem I'm going to read is called Thunder Afternoon during Ramadan. And it's dedicated to my wife, who during Ramadan some years ago chose to do a bowl of silence as well as not eat. In the poem, I refer to a little river that's near where I live called the Raids. You won't eat to rest and cleanse the stomach or talk to soothe, clean your tongue. You let the phone blare You put your hand to your heart, and I turn speechless. Like a sounding box, every passing sound vibrates in your day's silence. 
now in loud meadow far beyond the cricket grounds by a wisping rays a queen settles on her cushioned throne a bee lands on purple nap weed i make quick voodoo catching first drops from the deluge in cupped wrinkled hands the cooling storm swirls like arrows in a vortex the sun blown grasses fast from onyx ranks topaz ruby barrel a half rainbow gems the east for your afternoon swiss pulsing and screeching abstain from our sky between thunder shocks my dripping shifty shadow is a missing friend my heart takes the vow to listen more mallard swim please their paths refreshed i pick goose weed birds off my clothes then lift the latch to your calm garden so much sorrow disappears without a comeback in our untelling the next poem is called the beloved i was commissioned some years ago to walk through lincolnshire and write about whatever i saw lincolnshire is where i live in england and on the last day i saw a scarecrow and i suddenly had the urge to ask it what it knew about the beloved about allah subhanahu wa taala and this poem almost emerged at once the beloved I ask a scarecrow to speak if it could about the beloved it turns its straw head and says beyond what pain is ununderstandable no further torture exists not bone bars but the beloved's arms ready to welcome be confused who's beloved who's you can't separate then accept be bewildered a holy state the blessedness that follows grief the beloved is already approaching to hold you between sense and nonsense be empty has my legs and head easily on fire give up on reason don't fantasize you can outsmart the eternal one or keep your individual pursuits the beloved will use you like a rag to change the world you now despise what's beyond indiscernible soul is love sniff it when you see the blank wall bloom and try not to name it rose or jasmine just say you over and over to the beloved assalamu alaikum everyone keep well keep safe keep all a in your heart
MashaAllah, thank you so much for those beautiful words. As you were talking, I was, I'm was i actually currently diffusing some rose and jasmine oil and I was like, okay, I won't separate. I'll just focus on the one that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, so next up, we have a sister of mine whose name is Nargis Latif. She is a business development manager, a poet, writer, feminist, traveler, mother of five, and an overall loud London girl. She holds a master's degree in political science with over 12 years experience in IT. She travels mostly alone with an aim to connect to the divine and learn from each experience. Nargis believes poetry, like all art, is a divine expression. We are all paints and pens in the hands of God. Really looking forward to hearing your poetry today, Nargis. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa salam. Can you see me now? Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Um, thank you so much for that introduction, uh, Sakina. Um, I feel very humbled to be amongst such great poets. Um, I just dabble, really. But uh, thank you for including me in all of this. Um, the first poem that I'd like to read is called Justification. And along the theme of that everyone, I think, is kind of following, um, it's in praise of God. What clothes can I wear? to entice your love? What charms can I use to get your attention? What cleverness can I display to earn a shred of your affection? I am at loss for words as they are only yours. My limbs move only to your rhythm. My senses only see what you awaken. My sins only take me to the path you have forgiven. My laughter is only your humor a smile streaming through my shattered face. My wit is only your inspiration, gliding through my soul's empty space. My arms are only your embracing tools, comforting through me to me. Your names are my lofty aspirations, helping my teary blinded eyes to see. My dreams are only love letters sent from you with words of joy and hope and peace. My future is only your hand leading me through life, through fields of life's increase. My wisdom is only your sublime intellect, teaching sense to those who seek. My kind kindness is only your gracious benevolence, reaching through me to the meek. My voice is only your instrument, playing notes you pluck from chords. My love is only your shining essence, lighting through this darkness as reward. So how can I impress in all of this when only you exist? How can I feign any intellect when perception is at your request? Thank you. Um, this um, other poem is called, Would You? Would you weave a tapestry with the threads of your soul? Would you paint the future with your light? Would you walk through the burning fire of my passion? Would you cleave through the darkest of my night? I would. Would you swim through the bitterest of tears? Would you caress the folds of my scarred past? Would you embrace the poison shards of my fears? Would you cover my sinful stains with your gentle glances cast? I would. In a heartbeat, I would. Thank you, everybody. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam and jazakallah khair for gracing the stage and sharing your poetry. That was really beautiful. Um, I, I'm excited for this next poet uh, that I'm introducing because, as you know, we're, we're here for a, a kaleidoscope of stories and anthology. All the poets that you're hearing today have been published in this book. And the name, a kaleidoscope, actually comes from one of her poems, which you're going to hear today. Nura was born in a village in Austria and traveled as a child with her mixed family through several countries, eventually settling in Medina to Munawara in 1978, where she married and had a son. She moved to the UK in 2009, where she writes to express her faith and sort out her impressions and feelings. She finds language a beautiful tool whose use she is still trying to perfect. Um, I'm very excited, Salaamu Alaikum, Sister Noor, for you to share your poetry. Wa Alaikum Salaam, Wa Rahmatullah. Thank you so much. 
Um, I'm really grateful to be included in this gathering and it really warms my heart to see all of you. And I want to thank you, Rabia, for the work you've done in bringing this all together. Uh, I'm gonna be reading Kaleidoscope and yeah, Bismillah. Beautiful patterns form in a kaleidoscope of stories interconnected, creating beautiful patterns and like a child looking through its toys, we search for the light to illuminate the pages of our lives. We sing and hold hands and raise our arms to heaven. You are an essential part of the collective experience your story running like a thread in the material of consciousness. The history of fathers finding expression in the songs of their sons. An old man contemplating his story intertwined in ancient cobblestones, head bent, shuffling along a path trodden for centuries. His feet have walked so many miles across the pavements of continents. Now he is alone in the alleys of his mind, replaying old melodies. Young men scratching the old records of memory, the old stories of antiquity, give them a new spin, telling a different story, yet always the same enemy dark and cruel there outside, lurking in the shadows of false identities. The others have returned like chickens coming home to roost. Now they live next door and the scent of strangeness becomes familiar. And the eye of every enemy becomes a mirror in which we see our own imperfections. History, with its funny way of stammering and repeating sentences, finds reinterpretations of events that light up the kaleidoscope. Now faith is analyzed by labs, uh, now faith is analyzed in labs by men in white coats claiming credentials. Yet lacking the most basic necessity, manipulating minds steaming with sensitivity, telling us that progress can only be achieved by ruthlessness. But now we learn to deflect the evil eye with faith in its goodness and evil spells become nothing more than ineffectual mumblings in whose faces we hurl loving brilliance and the frequency of our songs resonate harmoniously, ascending and descending truthfully in love. Um, the next poem is called Good Intentions, and yeah, Bismillah. I wish I could sort my feelings like stacking shirts in the closet or sorting the wash. Coloreds go with coloreds, whites and blacks separated neatly. But there has been a pink tint to my clothes for a long time and white lint on the black trousers and my whites have turned a little gray. Ah, I wish it were so easy, clear demarcations between people and things. I still have trouble matching my wardrobe. Oh, how I would like to be so perfectly put together, matching bag and shoes, perhaps my coat a suitable shade to match the ensemble. But my life was never so neat or so well thought out. It was just full of good intentions. Intentions that all seemed to get muddled at some point and overlapped in strange places, like some punk rock outfit that's made to shock and repel, but somehow draws our attention and gives a little jolt in the right direction, speaks to the rebel in us all. How often we fall short of our ideal of perfection, but then, I slip on a warm sweater on a cold day and realize life is not meant to be perfect. And as it is, it is not bad at all. Thank you so much. MashaAllah, thank you so much, Nora. I really appreciated your poetry, particularly about the 
pursuit of perfection and how imperfect that idea is. So thank you so much for, for that. I really appreciated it. So next up, we have Hina Jabin. Hina um, is a poet. So from the clinical corporate world, Hina's deep connection to her faith and spirituality has been her therapy in balancing her evolution into the big and incre incredibly disconnected world she hopes to raise her family in as a metropolitan Muslim mother. Balancing tradition and modernity, Hina hopes that her poetry will be what connects those looking to reconnect to their maker. Now a full-time artist, her work can be found on her Instagram page by the name of Hina Jellybean. Hina, are you there? I am here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much. Um, just firstly, I just want to give a bit of salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Muhammad um, I also just want to say um, thank you so much for uh, including me in this immense um, project. I'm really like humbled by it and to follow everyone that's read before me and then to be in this position, it's just incredibly humbling. Um, again, thank you, Rabia. Um, so my poem is called Painted Toenails um, and I hope this resonates with whoever it must. So um, I'll start. Bismillah. I got my toenails painted on the day I knew you were there in celebration of my new love affair. I painted my toes red. All I did was stare. Positive. Two to three weeks. It was so amazing to me. A lifelong love affair is what anticipated me. I finally understood why I craved Tabasco on everything and why my moods would swing as high as the storms which would break the wind. I told your grandmother first. And for the first time in years, we embraced a real chesty embrace where we both felt for the first time in our history, a shared feeling of earth and space. I told your father second, and the look on his face filled my heart with the faith that brings me to the knowledge that you were loved from the moment those words left my face. I took you to Paris. You went up the Eiffel Tower and to the Louvre, tasted some French macaroons, which I know you loved because you made me eat lots. We spent lots of time with your auntie Aisha and we followed on to Barcelona where I felt at peace with you. We sat in La Sagrada Familia and cried. It may have been the scale of the beauty around me or my hormone imbalances that left me teary, perhaps, I felt unknowingly weary. After 10 days of being away, we came home to an immaculate space. Daddy had been cleaning with pride on his face, welcomed us here with his warm, welcomed us with his warm embrace, kissed me on my tummy and said, Salam peanut, that was to you. 10 weeks on and you are gone. Allah had a plan for you, and this was not it. Your heart beat only just for a little bit. Your tiny body was no bigger than a date. It comforts me to know that you did not know any hate. The world can be such a bitter and sad place, but know that it's better for you to be in Allah's embrace. I hope to see you at the gates of heaven, where my time comes to see your face. You are loved and my heart will always have a space. For you, my peanut, my toenails are still painted. I'm just not ready to take off that red. Salgam, that's um, everything for me. I hope that it sits peacefully with everyone. Jazakallah khair for having me here. And Jazakallah for that beautiful piece for, for sharing and being so open with us. That was a really beautiful poem. Painted Toenails by Hina. Our next poet, 
Uh, her name is Tasneem Ben Halim. Growing up in a large Texas family, her earliest memory was why? Light, color, and patterns were and are her primary ways of knowing. In her early teens, finding first one Rumi and then others who spoke the same language guided her over time to Islam and her larger family. Through her company, Diversity Wealth, Tasneem works to build bridges across cultures and generations, creating community and belonging. Through her independent trainings and her facilitation of Brene Brown's Dare to Lead program, she now helps others answer the question why in their work and their lives. I am so honored to introduce Tasneem to the stage to share some beautiful poetry. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. It's so nice to be here and to be in such honored, wonderful company. Um, my poems are brief and um, I am uh, bold in many other areas of my life and not about poetry. So I just want to begin by thanking, first of all, Rabia Saida Spiker um, for doing this. It's a generosity and, and for those who are hosting today, but most especially Karabia for just doing this work of bringing us all together and bringing the book together. It's a, it's a generosity of spirit and labor that endures. Um, and also to speak about Abdul Hai, our beloved Abdul Hai Moor. Allah bless him and give him light. And um, who encouraged so many of us on this journey of uh, living boldly and poetry and, um, and living fully uh, and, uh, and thinking about how he uh, and Malika, you don't get Abdul Hai without Malika. <laughs> Right? <laughs> um, and just thinking about our kids and how the love flowed through and our daughter Rabia is also in this anthology. So the first poem um, is about a poem that I wrote as I was on the plane <clears throat> from Dallas to Philly when we were going to bury Abdul Hai. May Allah give him rest and bring him every light and, and the beauty of that moment. So um, it's called What Endures. Do not think me distant or grieve when I am gone. For my soul has danced with light streams and taken such delight in the whisper fine breath of air that holds this life afloat and soars through azure blues of sky, cascading pinks and earth rich greens and browns. Rolling colors interplay that have been my intimate companions, heart, soul deep, preceding and transcending language before I could speak. Surely this will carry long after I am asleep, for the love endures as it always has, each and each and each, timeless in the dancing and embrace. And the second poem is um, one I wrote about my father. Um, I'm from a, a Austin, Texas, but really um, a little tiny community called Muhammad. Uh, Muhammad, yes, yeah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, from the time of the Texas Camel Corps. And um, so I always imagined there was this lone Muslim going, "Oh Allah, please, please!" And it took me a while, but we we got there. And now there's a number of us. And um, so we had, uh, my father imagined a green cemetery there on the land. And uh, he was the first person uh, buried in the green cemetery. And um, we washed him together, uh, actually my children and, and some of my siblings and managed his body. And it was an extraordinary time. And so <clears throat> this poem was a poem that I wrote shortly after his passing. And it's called, Before I Knew. <clears throat> If I had known it was the last time to sit so casually and feel the breeze together, to watch the day fade into bright pinks and darkness, to speak of trees and the nearness of stars, to sing, I see the moon and the moon sees me and shine on harvest moon for me and my gal. And here you call my name lilting and uplifting 
with your special welcome, unlike any other voice. I wish now, only wish, would I have lingered over goodbyes. And breathed a long, longer sigh over your heart and so well that I could have warmed you now as you rest, first buried in our Green Hill Cemetery with its single name, love. Thank you again for this opportunity and um, blessings. Salam. Wa rahmatullah. Allah Sayyidina. Assalamu alaikum, mashallah. Thank you so much, Sister Tasneem, for such moving um, poetry and important and powerful reflections about death and transition, but the beauty that can be found um, in these moments. So thank you so much, Jazakallah Khair. I'm truly, truly honored to have heard your work today. Um, next up, I'd like to invite to the stage someone who is my dear beloved sister. I love her so much. Her name is Saraya Ba. She is a poet, writer, and cultural producer who draws upon traditional West African storytelling in the style of the Griot, <clears throat> talking about identity, faith, the relationship with self and everything in between. She is the co-producer of the Black and Muslim in Britain project, a social engagement initiative to highlight the importance of stories from the Black community. Um, through her engagement in the creative arts and social activism, Saraya has been invited to, gl to globally engage in large and intimate performances, panel discussions, facilitating poetry workshops in venues such as the British Library, the British Museum, Amnesty International Headquarters and the National Poetry Library. She's also been featured in articles on the BBC, The Times, Stylist Magazine, Al Jazeera, and much, much more. She's also a member of the Nana Poetry Collective with myself and my sister Manira Pilgrim and Rakea Fatuga, who you, who you would have seen at the, at the first um, Kaleidoscope event. So without further ado, I'd like to invite my sister Saraya Bar to the stage. Alaikum salam. Thank you so much for um, including me in this incredible event, in this incredible anthology. Um, I have chills running up and down my spine, my veins, my skin. Um, may Allah just increase the love and increase um, the words and the poetry. So I'm going to not take up too much time and share my contributions to um, the Kaleidoscope of Stories. The first poem that I'm going to be reciting is called Supplicate 25 Ramadan 1440. And this was written um, on a night of Tawrih in 2019 in the Maqam of Sheikh um, Ahmed Tijani in Fez, Morocco. Weeping willows bow but never break as do these sisters who never break as they bow to their maker. Their concern is the here and now, the moment where fears, desires, and dreams crystallize into deeds. Supplications scooped in henna-tinted hands made to the one who commands us to yield to his oneness, who weathers storms to strengthen the roots of those who bow. Their branches graze the masjid floor, create ripples in Persian rugs. Their du'as rustle wordlessly to frolic in the domes covered in sacred geometry. How glorious that devotions can manifest in a multitude of ways. How glorious is al Musawir to fashion mercy in these precious days. They never take a break as they bow. They alternate from prostration to circumnavigation of their tasfir. At times, tears carve tracks on cheeks the hue of mahogany. Shoulders shudder from swallowed grief, not wanting to wail as they weep. Yet they still don't break, just supplicate and bow and wait and bow. Wow. So, 
that was Supplicate. And the next poem that I shall be reciting is called Fisa Bi'ila. And I wrote that, I do believe, um, during one Mawlid, just contemplating Allah and his mercy and um, the beauty of our beloved um, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. La ilaha illallah is the message that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam conveyed to man from heaven. An affirmation that should aid the manifestation of my heart to change the parts of my existence that is the devil's playground I struggle to exist in. In my mind, my deeds are only for him indeed, yet without fail, I always succeed to allow my flaws to supersede my actions of good intent. My deeds indeed will follow me to the day of recompense. And it makes me wonder how seriously I make measures to repent. Am I really letting go of my ego to truly worship Allah or am I simply clocking in the minimum requirements, not allowing my actions to be led by my heart? And I know there'll be gasps and subhanallahs, but does this not cross your mind? In your haste to prostrate before his merciful grace, have you been miserly with your time? I guess I'm offloading my mind because when I truly contemplate this deen, it's one of a kind. Where Allah says, if I walk to him, he'll run to me in double time and I still allow my nafs to get in the way. That's a crime, which will make me a criminal. Yet life isn't always that simple because even in imprisonment, Allah can work miracles because confinement brings redemption and he's oft forgiving. So if his mercy takes me from darkness to life, then surely that's a worthy reason to live in conscious love from above that is felt in the heart. But where do I start? And the answer begins with a change of hearts. At first, it wasn't apparent to me and difficult for me to perceive that the beloved will intercede for me if only I follow his ways. That the emulation of his manners to live with the fact that no soul possesses superiority besides those who radiate goodness and piety. O oh, changer of hearts, your mercy transcends through light, space and time. That revolutional love that feeds the souls and the minds. That love that metamorphs into a key that frees me from the fortress of ignorance then shapeshifts to a gentle hand that brushes the sand from my eyes, which blocks the radiance of Allah in my life. You may not be here physically, but the intention and the goal is that your character will live on through me, inshallah. My name is Sareba. Thank you so much for um, allowing me to contribute to the space. May you remain safe, may you remain loved, and may you always um, seek for Allah and he finds you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, ameen, ameen, ameen. Thank you for sharing your beautiful poetry. Fi sabilillah, that was beautiful, amazing flow. And I definitely resonate and I pray that Allah accepts all of our efforts and gives us more opportunities to draw near to him. Um, really appreciate you sharing those two pieces. And I'm excited to introduce our next poet uh, by the name of Ron Jeeves. He's better known as an historian of Islam in Britain especially for his groundbreaking biography, Islam in Victorian Britain, The Life and Times of Abdullah Qiyam. He has recently co-edited Victorian Muslim uh, with Jamie Gillum in 2017, and his new monograph, Islam in Britain, Muslim Mission in the Age of Empire, appeared in early 2018. He's held several chairs at British universities, mashallah, and remains as a visiting professor at the Center of the Study of Islam in the UK, based in the University of Cardiff. He's been writing, publishing, and performing poetry since the 80s, recently appearing at the Bradford Literature Festival along with Ben Okra and others in a session entitled Modern Mystical Poets. His first single authored collection of poems, Rumi Weeds, was published in 2017 with Beacon Press. And I'm very excited to introduce and to invite to the stage this modern mystical poet, Sidi Iran. Assalamu alaikum. Hey. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Um, anyway, um, I would like to say, first of all, assalamu alaikum. 
And I really want to thank Rabia for including me in the anthology and of course for this event tonight. I have really been looking forward to this so much. Um, and my truest thanks to all the poets that are reading. I, I mean, you have been overwhelmingly inspiring. Um, I've got two short poems to read. Um, the first is a poem which um, actually arose or came out of a bad holiday. Uh, I went with my wife to the coast of Turkey. We both decided we hated it. Um, and as an alternative, we caught a public bus to Konya uh, in order to visit the tomb um, of the great mystic and someone of, who's been a deep inspiration to me since I was 17 years old, Jaludin Rumi. On the bus, uh, I passed uh, a, what was almost a forest um, of bulrushes waving in the wind. And uh, I penned this poem on the bus. Um, and it is certainly a tribute um, to Jaludin Rumi. Uh, and it is also, uh, if you can say that, a, a, a tribute um, to Almighty God that at least planted in my heart the desire to see. I've called it alternatively bulrushes and roomy weeds um, or roomy reeds sometimes. Perhaps eventually I will decide which title is the one to use. Forests of feathered fronds made roomy under surrender. White silk bends in daylight turns purple to breathe sunset. Higher than giants, heavy headed, slender, bow to the wind, but never broken. Jaluddin, I am in your dream. Scent, the mystery of breath. Around 20 years ago, on a visit to, to Tunisia, I wrote a poem in honor of the prophet Venice or and as a result of that, I had a crazy idea in my head that I would write poems to all of the prophets, um, or as many as I could. That has been a very, very difficult task, because waiting for the inspiration for so many great souls that taught to us over aeons. I got stuck, and the one I got, got stuck on was actually um, Isa or Jesus. And I put this poem off for years and years and years and years. And the reason was that so like the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Jesus has been written about by so many that have fallen in love with him over decades and centuries and, and millennia, that I thought, how can I find something original as to say, uh, an image? that would portray him in a way that he hadn't been portrayed before. That was my unique voice. It came only a couple of years ago, opposite where I live on my hill in West Wales. There is a place that is absolutely full. It is right now, actually, um, of those wonderful white flowers, those tiny heralds of spring, snowdrop. And sitting on that hill, looking at the snowdrops as an image of purity, I suddenly got my Isa poem. So here we are, to Isa, peace be upon him. The light glowed on his polished brow. The moon at the last midnight. White pearls hung their heads, too delicate the heels of men, each one threaded to a tapestry of green, yet so gently seen 
as he strode the hills. In solitude, the collectors of ills were avoided. The pearl of great price, one breath that had returned to the source. Thank you so much all. Um, I'm just looking forward now to listening to the rest of the poets. This has truly been a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you so much for that poem. It was wonderful. And also the stories that accompanied them. I was really happy to hear um, about your travels and what inspired the poetry. So thank you so much. Next up, we have a poet called Novid Shahid. I want to pronounce this right, Novid Shahid. Um, I hope that's correct. Novid Shahid is an English teacher and a writer of novels, short stories and poetry. Born and brought up in Aylesbury in the UK, Novid developed a love for writing stories and reading English literature as a child, which culminated in him later becoming an English teacher in local secondary schools. In 2014, he published his first novel, the mystical thriller, The Hidden Ones. And thereafter, he published a book of short stories and poetry. Take it away, Novid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. Inshallah, you can hear me. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala al-ashrif al-anbiya'i wa al-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma alimna bima yinfa'na. وَنْفَعْنَا بِمَا تُعَلِّمْنَا وَزِدْنَا مِنْ فَضْلِكَ الْعَلْمُ مُتَعْظِيمُ إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ اللَّهُمَّ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ رَبْ إِشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَاحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي أَمَّا بَعْدُ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته to everyone all poets and the audience and uh, I'd like to say thank you for to sister Rabia for including me in this wonderful event mashallah so I'm going to read uh, two poems, two narrative poems from this wonderful book. First one is called The Hellish Train to Tunbridge Wells uh, and the Muslimic Infidels, and that's on page 407. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Once upon a hellish train that my memory will never expel, I traveled down to Tunbridge Wells with the Muslimic Infidels. I walked along the corridors searching for an empty carriage. Each one was packed, none could relax. Three more were along the passage. I went into the first one and was about to take a seat when I glanced upon the passenger and my skin began to creep. His eyes were cold and dark like graves. His beard was wild and wavy. He wore a t-shirt with a quote, come to ISIS, baby. He looked at me right up and down and was seething without rage. But before I could exit the place, he roared a great tirade. Look at you, look at you, you Muslim Uncle Tom. You're worse than Kuffar, you really are. I can kill you with a bomb. You, you sold your soul, you big a-hole. You kissed the ass of Kuffar. Instead of making war on them, you vote in their referenda. Look at you, look at you, don't even say a word. If you stay here any longer, I'll beat you like a goat herd. The shock of his frenzied comments made me flushed and rather dizzy. So I left and tried the next carriage. It also seemed quite empty. I was, about to, I was just about to take a rest and gather up my senses when I, I noticed the other passenger and his look made me defensive. His eyes were dry like the sands of Dubai and his smirk was condescending. The sun and daily mail he held, he spoke twisted, twisted and menacing. Look at you, look at you, you filthy little Muslim. Takia foaming out your mouth. Go jump on a pile of pigskin. Go back to the slums from where you come. You don't deserve to be here. You made our country stink of curry and now you want Sharia. Look at you, look at you with all your false outrage. We can't trust your filthy words. Get lost, just go away. So I moved off from this loon, feeling a rising flurry. At this point, I was in desperate need of a plate of chicken curry. He, his, out, his outburst made me stumble out into the corridor. Inadvertently, I walked into the next available door. Before I could steady my breaths, I noticed this cool dude. He sat there with designer beard and a pompous attitude. Look at you, look at you, you barbaric Islamist. You take Quran so literally and prayer you can't resist. 
Why are you so damn obsessed with God and holy seasons? Just follow what makes sense to you. There's no God but reason. You're giving us a real bad name. We're the laughing stock of the English. When in Rome, be as Romans are. Assimilate or be extinguished. Look at you, look at you. Your faith needs to reform. Soon your sort will all die out. Science will be our norm. I stepped aside and wandered on on this relentless charging train. Only one carriage was left. I had to take the strain. I stepped into the compartment, shuddering at who might be there, and two men that I saw sitting made me gasp in sheer despair. On the right sat a Muslim guy, a white turban crowning his head, a black beard longer than a baguette, and his rucksack filled me with dread. On the left there sat this man who wore a three-piece rainbow suit. He looked as gay as Dorian Gray, so I stood perfectly mute. Then the gay man spoke so clear, pointing at Muslim, humour sparkling in his eyes, proclaiming with a wide grin, look at him, look at him, this Muslimic infidel. He looks like old bin Laden and he thinks I'm going to hell. He believes all these fairy tales about prophets and flying horses. I think all he needs to do is take some science courses. Look at him, look at him. He's probably got four wives. The only thing he eats is curry. He lives an uncultured life. But if all that is what he believes, well, that's entirely up to him. I can sit in the same space, in equilibrium. The Muslim then uh, looks up at me, observing my shock and horror. He pointed at the rainbow man and spoke like a proper gora. Look at him, look at him. He is so bloody gay. I've told him that I disagree, but he doesn't care for what I say. Look at him, look at him, this rainbow infidel. He's wearing so many colors, they're giving me dizzy spells. Although I don't really approve, it's his choice for what he does. I don't accept his actions, but he's human just like us. I follow what I deem is true, I aim to do my best. I hope Allah is pleased with me as life is a profound test. You may think I'm a mad mullah who can't move with the times. At least I don't change with the wind, so life's for me sublime. If this man here thinks he's right, well, that's entirely up to him. I can sit in the same space, in equilibrium. I stood and smiled just for a while, remembering the others, the ISIS man, the Nazi man, and the narcissistic brother. So I weighed up all the choices, in which carriage would I dwell? I'd sit with a Muslimic preacher and the gay man from Tunbridge Wells. And the second poem is on page 431, The Homecoming of My Old Friend. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. One day a painful memory shook my heart. My old friend had served me since my birth and I had cast him out onto the street denying his undying faithfulness. For my old friend was becoming wearisome, especially now I'd made new trendy friends. In these progressing times, he seemed passe. My friends would snigger at my companion. So I barged him out onto the lonely street. I slammed the door as he began reasoning. I convinced myself he was an inconvenience. I assured my friends I had forsaken him. Many days and weeks passed gradually. I felt the world vibrating at my feet. His knocking had halted some time ago, but still I knew he lingered there outside. So I threw off all my guilt and held my breath, then leapt into the mires of my desires. I plunged in hordes of feigned relationships. I hosted great extravagant soirees. Fleeting ecstasies were my preoccupations. My house bulged with gate crashes gushing in. My heart sagged with intruders surging in. Until one day, as I jigged around my room, encircled by my artificial friends, they closed in on me, stifling my breast. They pressured me to offer them my heart. When a slow knock rocked against my door, its reverberation left a thunderous roar. My body trembled like a shaken leaf. From deep within arose familiarity. I staggered to and fro, shielding my ears, but still the knocks resounded thundering. And then the realization struck me down. 
my abandoned friend was waiting in the cold. And as this certainty aroused my heart, tears of shame ran, searing my desires. Each drop fell and my heart was up in flames. The intruders fled, shrieking in agony. I moved towards the knocking on my door. The tense smiles of my friends stood in the way, attempting to divert my attention. They promised untold pleasure if I stayed, but when they realized I was intent, they grabbed my legs and fought to drag me back. They wailed and cried, revealing their dismay, and I just kicked them off with bitterness. And so I stood there, facing my front door. I turned and saw my friends gaping in horror. I turned the handle with my quivering hand. My heart lamented as the door opened. I dreaded facing him after so long. I planned I'd throw myself before his feet. When suddenly, every single thing vanished. My house, my friends, myself, and nothing else remained. And then I found myself not in my room, but on the lonely street there shivering. Before me stood a great glistening door. It opened and my old friend emerged. He covered me with warm, comforting robes. He wrapped me in his unifying glow. He sheltered me from sorrow and the cold, and I had been a homeless, wretched soul, and by his love, I'd finally returned home. Jazakum la khairan, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Uh, this next poet, um, Maya Saratawi, couldn't be here for the live stream, so I'm just going to load up the pre recorded video. Uh, Brother Naweed, thank you so much for your poetry, for the humor, for the levity, and for the spirituality that's contained within your lines. Uh, Maya Saratawi is a, lo a lawyer, poet, and artist who currently lives in Kuwait. Poetry has become an essential tool for her to explore deeper within self, the roots of injustice, its ironic beauty, and to witness the marvels of the creator. She seeks to awaken, heal, and connect with her soul family. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share the video right here. circle um, and uh, the low tree thank you so much for all your efforts um, the poems that uh, I, I would love to share with you were inspired to me in uh, intense moments of my life which were which are related to my uh, uh, nationality um, in a way uh, so the first one is uh, about Palestine. Uh, I that summer I was uh, denied entry after being questioned for uh, like seven hours, um, and uh, I'm always uh, baffled by how complicit GCC countries are in uh, the occupation of uh, our families. Um, so I was underneath a tree and I was almost going to break and I felt like, yeah, I felt very connected to that tree in that moment. It wasn't an acacia tree, but this poem's called Acacia Tree. The dry desert heat is unapologetic as I hang on and almost break timber limbs. Thirsty for fluid trees, scented molasses, flavors built in instruments, safe cabins. So I stand still, still too kindly shade, swaying thorny branches, green fern and bones, dancing high in sad songs of summer storms, worldless memories of caterpillars' breaches, bulldozers' breakage, killing kids in masses. So is, is mercy still woven in chastised roots? And the second poem is called Fatma's Children. Um, my grandmother has dementia. She grew up in Iraq, so she's always uh, remembering uh, a different world, really, from what we see 
today in Kuwait, which is very metropolitan. She lived near the river Tigris, to Dijla, and um, they they were you know the families were always together, and she basically left on the day of her wedding. So, and now she lives in a big house, and it's very disorienting for her because their lives were much simpler in Iraq in the 50s and she's always looking for people because um, she's alone now you must dementia glitches you must dementia glitches recollect Fatma's children my children where are they Yuma, we are here not in Iraq Look, we are in peace. Perhaps, perhaps seen from the sky, the murderers outside, holders of inner snipers, now nearing Yemen's borders, still striking her kids out of sight. Her frightened voice escalates. My children, where are they? Why are you not looking? A forsaken fragrance funnels forward into the Gulf Sea. Did she come atop the roof to see her ears corpses diced and dissolved in rivers red? And of course, I'm referring to Sayyidah Fatma alayhi salam. Assalamu alaykum. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. MashaAllah, really beautiful. Really enjoyed those poems, MashaAllah. So next up we have Asiya Shan Davidson, who will be um will be will be sharing an audio from her. So Asiya grew up in the wildly beautiful island of Tasmania, but she now lives in Melbourne, Australia. In 1996, she spent three weeks in the Rift Mountain town of Shawan in Morocco, a visit that was to radically change the course of her life. She obtained a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of Tasmania, majoring in painting and art theory. She is a single mother of five children. She's interested in all meaning systems and religions with a special love for Sufism. She finds it difficult to fit God into the boxes and languages that human cultures devise to know him. She's a student herbalist with an interest in all forms of healing. So we're going to be playing an audio from Asia, um, and you will hear the sound of rain in the background, just in case you're wondering what the sound is. Okay. This poem is called Made of Sea. What does it all mean? I ask you this in the deep heart of the night, the pulsing of stars, the quiet vigilance of a plum tree, with feet wet on concrete standing, I catch a glimpse of the moon peeking above the old pear. What does it all mean, this life that has no coherence, and if I try and rid myself of the rogues or return to a recognisable narrative, God has other ideas. Those aren't the weeds fall, sometimes gently and sometimes not gently. Listen, there's no need for comparisons with sturdier, more conventional stories. In the still of the night, there is only praise. Shoulders flecked with scattering mists from lazy night clouds silver streaked hair receiving some more moonlight what does it all mean life pressed into small tight spaces burst forward carrying with it the collected collected flotsam of a tsunami scattering all over inland villages the rotten debris of a lifetime People who didn't see or hear the wave, baffled. And you, running down the road naked. A live wire that no one wants to touch. Take comfort. Not the land, but made of sea. No storm can break water. Shut your eyes 
and know that it flows from the inside. Beloved by atoms and ants, trees and sandy beaches, each grain inscribed with praise of him, this body longed for, a sustained lapping of waves that soothes the ribs. Love, hiding in the torrent all along, night sky is a soft and warm cloak. It says, what concern do you have for drowning when you are made of sea? Love body that ripples from the inside. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This poem is called The City. In the city I walk entranced. I hear the hammer on the anvil. I press crushed petals to my lips. And every door holds the image of a sacred map radiating circles and diamonds and stars. Every house opens onto a wellspring. In my room at night, I feel the pull of my heart rise through the roof and flow out through the cosmos. The ceiling is 20 meters high. I inhale with the Fukara who gathering in the garden of oranges at that very minute chant of life. Unable to get there by foot in the night alleyways, I stay home in the room in the center of the universe. The city is made of the pure heart of being its labyrinth laneways, artisans and traders, men and women, have scaled the sky on the rope of God and brought his vision back so that it echoes in every courtyard. The full moon rising over the fountain at Fajr time and the Adhan calls echoes in the dark of the universe city the same Adhan that calls in my own heart five times a day. I am the Camarilla of Sana. I am the warm sand fashioned into mud in Tarim. I am the fountain sweeper calling Marhabba Haja, astonishing me, expanding me in welcome the olives that grow before the rise of the riff, seed bathed in the light of the first creation. I am that light too. It would be easy to stay for several lifetimes in the city, in the heart of the universe, cradled by eternity, rolling over in love each day and each minute a portal to the moment. And this is why we must live somewhere else, so far away in the city that is not a city, within buildings that have no heart, post-structural distortions where curves give way to jagged and disjointed brokenness, and flat streets call our souls into heedlessness. To hear the Adhan requires a dedicated will. Mashallah, Jazakallah khair um, to Sister Asia for sharing this amazing poetry. And uh, how phenomenal is it that this is an international event? We've got poets from all around the world, all sorts of technology, all being joined together. It's just really fantastic uh, that we are able to do something this immense. Alhamdulillah. Uh, the next poet that I'm introducing, her name is Tazmeen Udin. She's a seeking soul based in New York City. She's an empath, a lover of love and life, and a dreamer committed to changing the world one smile at a time. 
Through courses offered by Rumi Center of the Arts, she has learned to combine her spiritual and poetic journeys and sees writing as a form of spiritual practice. You can find her musings on Instagram at soulful underscore reflections. And I would like to introduce her now to the stage as well. Salaam alaikum, sister. Thank you, Abbas. Um, Salaam alaikum, everyone. Um, it is an honor to be included in this anthology um, with some of the teachers and poets that I greatly admire and respect. So this is um, a very humbling experience for me. Um, and so I have two pieces and they're both short pieces. Um, so Bismillah, um, I'll start with the first. It's called Haikus for the Divine. One, you are the writer of my being. Teach me to read your signs around me. Two, your name to me is an elixir of love. It seeks to consume me. And I think more and more as I get older, I'm learning that um, in many cases, especially when you're feeling overwhelmed, words don't do justice. And you know, you, there are times and moments where um, words can be absent, but the heart is very present. Um, so the second piece is called prayer. I didn't raise my hand. My palms didn't kiss the sky. With no words and all heart, my soul saw who answered. So may all of our prayers that maybe do not have words be answered in the best of ways. Thank you. Mashallah, thank you so much. That almost felt too short. I was like, wait, where's, where's the rest of it? But I understand you're reading haikus, so thank you so much. So next up, we have Aisha Mayet, who was born and bred in Johannesburg, South Africa. She works in the healthcare sector, which for her has bridged the frontiers of our shared human experience. As a self-confessed bibliophile of many years, literature remains her teacher and her sanctuary. Her works include haikus published in the Lotus Blut, as well as poetry published online. So we're going to have a pre-recorded um, performance from Aisha Mayet. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Um, it's such an honor to be with you all today. Um, my name is Aisha, and I'm joining you from sunny South Africa. And I will be reading my two poems from the Kaleidoscope of Stories called The Magenta Tablecloth, as well as Sobur. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The Magenta Tablecloth. They said never to seat you for dinner on magenta, lest your appetite ignites like flames to firewood, lest desires flare and faculties leave, and food vanishes in the wormhole where once you sat. What sorcery is this? A masculinity so infantile that femininity is flippant? Let me teach you how to take me seriously. How did you get to be here? Answer me. You breathed through me, took nutrients through my spiral arteries, learned to fight from the blueprints of my immunity. How dare you disrespect me? If my placenta denied you, you would cease to be. Let that sink in. You would cease to be. And my second poem, I think, is unfortunately very topical in our current pandemic era. It's entitled Sober and um, is actually based on my experience of my granny, who was very near and dear to me um, at the time. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Sober. 
Make sober, make sober, whispered the sea of cloaked figures. Her throat tightened, her chest heaved, her eyes burned, her ears winced. How, how, how? Dick drink. Here, drink. Darling, water, sugar, now, sober. There came the hissing reminder again. Patience, really, to keep a good attitude. Good attitude, now. She bit down hard in the early morning numb disbelief. No, no, it's not her, but my sweetheart. It is. Like the prediction of a violent thunderstorm on a clear summer's day. Please, no. Yet the way of the world is sure. Live, love, lose. Live again. One day, her gurgling belly laugh will echo joyfully. Her love for richly hued caftans will overpower the white shroud and the aroma of her freshly baked cherry Madeira will subdue the camphor so dense in your nostrils today. Dickory, yes, Dickory. Darling, she called you that. Thunderstorms? have a way of restoring that enraged, elephant-battered, uprooted earth. Jazakallah again for joining me and warmest salams and stay safe to you all. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah to Sister Aisha, who had pre-recorded and sent that in. Definitely very timely, and I appreciate the reminder for sabr. May Allah increase all of our sabr and grant us with the sweetness of shukr as well in our lives. Um, I would like to introduce our next uh, poet, whose name is Sabila Raza. Um, Sabila is based in the northwest of England, is British-born and of Pakistani heritage. Her creativity is centered in expressing the complexities of human fragility, hoping to open consciousness, empower, and convey the shared vulnerabilities within the many shades of being human. MashaAllah. Sabila has been featured in The Tempest and shares writing in her online blog and Instagram named A Million Thoughts a Minute. A M T A M blog. That's one word. Sabila envisions to continue and develop in sharing her perspective through storytelling and writing in different media. Salam alaikum and welcome to the stage. Salam everyone. Um, my first poem is called Her. There was an innocence in her eyes, a passion in her voice. Her smile extended across her entire face. Her touch, once experienced, you didn't want to let go. A calmness surrounded her, her heart so gentle, I was afraid the slightest thing could break it. She was present, yet somewhere else, her mind questioning, a consuming dissatisfaction, peace she desired in chaotic unexpectedness. She never masked how she felt, Emotions always on the surface, pain, grief, sadness, joy, love, hope, were a part of her humanness, never a weakness. There was no one like her, uniqueness embodied in her essence, all is true to who she was, completely unapologetic. And my second poem is called Truly Falling. The way you smile, the way you laugh, you sparkle completely in pure happiness. It is not just a part of you, it is who you are, a joke found in anything, in the simple, ordinary and unexpected. 
all those around instantly enveloped in the energy of your joyful innocence. Why was I so taken? Without needing to think, you made my soul smile. An inner glow overwhelmed, soothing reminding reminders in how small singular moments connect. Living life meant finding my peace, my acceptance. Hope is always there if you can just see it. Like everyone else, I know your life was never perfect. You had your share of traumas and pain. Oppression was deeply planted, well before eyes could open, but you still chose to smile, chose to laugh whenever the chance. I can easily see spending year after year like this with you. I would never tire. All those things that guarded my heart without realization vanished. Is it that simple when destiny gives you permission? Jazakallah. Thank you so much, Sabila. That was absolutely beautiful. Um, truly enjoyed that. Okay, so next up we have Abdul Karim Stone, who will also be joining us by way of a pre recorded video. Um, his biography is very, very humble. He says, Getting on in the UK, a not so new Muslim father of three, nearly all adults, can only write poems with the rare internal season of inspiration, but still searching for a voice. No real ac accomplishments, but a relish for the divine which I think is the biggest accomplishment of all. So next up we have Abdul Karim Stone. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, many of us have in glances of inner vision, I do at least, sometimes I close my eyes and seemingly random but fleeting images appear. Technically, these are called closed eyes hallucinations and they're actually surprisingly common. They've been a constant companion to me, but never really made much sense, leaving me somewhat perplexed. Um, sometimes they make sense momentarily, but then become quite meaningless. This poem is a composite of images, for instance, images of birds, which I have quite frequently, but here I've actually strung them together in a somewhat artificial way, which I hope makes sense and is quite beautiful. The snatching. I have oceans and forests within me. I have skies. And when I close my eyes, I can see falling from a web of stars, a luminous mist down onto these woods within. From its dark silence oozes the sound of the owl. I'm down by the beach in flickers of silver. Fish jump in succession, trying to reach the descending mist of light until in a moment the might of the ocean pulls them back or until one is snatched in the clouds of an owl. And as the owl, like a thread of silver, flies away, the roots of the ancient forest begin to glow. A light wakens the sleeping birds and they pluck the now illuminated leaves and fly up to form a shining murmuration. One by one a bird departs his spectacle and drops a leaf upon a sloping ridge, forming a nest that, strain, that shines without strain. Its light creates for the first time a vista of my whole being. I can make out a bridge that spans to a different shore, a place I never saw before. So in this way I've made these images, fleeting images real, but I can actually make um, more meaningful images. Ones that I don't actually see as an actual image, but in this no next poem, I hope you can, uh, with your mind and with your heart, actually um, create a visual image. Seven heavens. Oh Allah, create such a vast play that if this world were flung within, our searching would be in vain, like in the haystack is lost a pin. Upon this plain let there run a herd of whitest deer that number more than every sun in every single sphere. 
and every deer upon their route as they gallop upon their way do with their hoofs make their salute to Muhammad the rude we say sallallahu alaihi wasallam and let above a murmuration of nightingales fly so fast that such a numeration even counting angels couldn't try for every atom create a bird that flies and sings his song then a second then a third you couldn't imagine such a throng and the only song that's ever sung in their sweet and tender voice is not to one to make their young but for his best beloved choice this deer's journey is surely felt and the bird God's journey is surely heard by the hearts deep in which has dwelt the love of his preferred. Now with your mind and with your soul and with your whole body too, I want you to imagine a shoal of shining fish swim inside of you. In the silence of your inner ocean they shine so beautifully, a glowing light in motion sublime and gentle imagery millions as one they go in synchronized perfection and they're forming as they flow a word of adoration see them scribing deep within and they will make you feel so glad when you see that as they swim they are writing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so I'd like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to recite a couple of poems that are printed in this book thank you Jazakallah khairs Allahumma salli ala Muhammad and ala ala Muhammad. Jazakallah khair for Sidi Abdul Karim for sharing this wonderful poetry uh, to us through recorded video. We have heard from so many amazing poets, from so many phenomenal poets who are all published in this book, Kaleidoscope of Stories, but I have to say that would not have been possible without Rabia's vision and her hard work, immense, immense hard work, um, I, I mean, I'm honored to have collaborated with her on pre and presenting all of this to you, but really all the credit does go to her and I would like to invite her uh, now up to the stage to, to share some more about the book as well. And I think she's got a little surprise for us as well. Assalamu alaikum, Rabia. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, especially Abbas and Sukina, who've been amazing hosts tonight, um, and to all our amazing poets, mashallah. Um, this is the book. It is a really amazing book full of beautiful uh, poems. Um, you can get it through online booksellers and you can order it in most bookshops as well. Um, now, then, we our next book coming out soon is this Symphonies of Theophanies, Moroccan Meditations by Peter Jedjik. And he, uh, it's a book about his um, time in Morocco. It's a travel journal, journal uh, with poetry, prose, and um, photos as well. It's, it's very atmospheric, actually. It's very, it's a lovely book. Um, so I'd like to invite Peter. Um, to read a poem from his upcoming book, inshallah. Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, and thank you all, all for tuning in and for being here. Um, and thank you, Rabia, for that introduction. Um, I want to first and foremost thank you, Rabia, for uh, uh, for this absolutely astounding and amazing work in, in arranging this event, um, in editing and organizing the, the anthology and in creating and directing Lotri Press, which I think is such an amazing and a necessary initiative for the contemporary Islamic art scene. Um, I also want to thank all of my fellow writers and artists who really give such life and joy to devotional poetry in writing today, um, as we see in the anthology. Um, so as uh, Rabia said, I want to share uh, two short pieces from my upcoming uh, collection. Um, Symphonies of Theophanies, Moroccan Meditations, which will be published very shortly uh, by Lotri Press, and I think um, an inaugural event uh, should be announced soon, uh, announced uh, and shared soon, inshallah ta'ala. Um, so this is a collection I wrote while I was living in Morocco, especially in Fez, um, and as Rabia said, it's, it compiles a collection of not only poetry, but also photography, um, and short prose pieces that um, it, it all arose from other places, the saints, the people, the shrines, and the living pulsing uh, baraka 
uh, in Morocco, the Balad al Awliya, or the, the Land of Saints. Um, so I know aware <laughs> behind schedule, so I won't take too long. I'll just read uh, two short poems. Um, uh, the first one uh, titled Maksura, which is um, inspired by uh, the various motifs in Islamic calligraphy that uh, adorn many uh, of the Moroccan mosques and shrines. Um, and the second called Set of Flame, which was actually written at the tomb of Ismuli uh, Abdul Salam ibn Mashish, uh, a tomb in, in northern Morocco. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Maksura. Within each atom, ich enwrapped, attuned to the chords of celestial spheres. Ich infinite lamps glow, swaying, aflame in ich deep and simple wordless mantric praise, shedding light in each crack ich and crevice ich of creation song. Ich the source, ich, 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 ich illuminating ich a unicity. Ich blazes pulsing in each ich periphery. Shadowed in ich veils and ich veils and ich if in each other and in all things, so we see of the distant embers ich, ich, of those swaying, praising lamps. Ich, ich memories stir ich in the swirling mists of separation. All things become mirrors of light, all things breaking through brokenness, ich, ich return uh, to the glowing niche ich of fullness. And then I'll read the second poem, Set of Flame. So like a deer who yearns for living streams, whose lips have kissed the mountain brooks, and like other love drunks, songs of sky wrapped birds upon strong lyres of bewitched bards, and like other dawn kissed tree of life adrip with wisdom's trickled quenching dews, and like prophetic tongues enamored, ablaze in luminous unveilings, a dance bursts forth from atoms secret. It whispered roaring rites of love. I am set aflame. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Peter. And I really, I do recommend this book. Um, it is a very amazing book, which really does transport you to the sacred realm of Morocco, which is you know, filled with saints. So please do have a look for that book when it comes out in a month or so. Um, okay, so thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'll hand over to Abbas now. Asalaamu Alaikum. Alaikum salam, jazakallah. Thank you so much, uh, Rabia, for everything that you have done for uh, uh, giving an opportunity for all of us poets to to share this. Um, on behalf of Gamma as well, the organization that has put together this presentation, gathering all Muslim artists, I think everyone attending, and I especially thank everyone sharing. And of course, uh, just to close out the session, I'd like to invite all of the posts to turn their videos back on. Uh, maybe we can get a group picture. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. MashaAllah, so many posts. And I, you know, I really would have loved if, you know, given different circumstances we could all just be in a coffee house sharing coffee and poetry with a nice warm fire uh that would have been so delightful one day uh, one day <laughs> inshallah inshallah <laughs> once the, the once allah delivers us from the plague and yeah. uh, and may yeah, he inshallah. also deliver us from any sort of spiritual illnesses that we may have i mean May Allah accept all of the, the amazing poets, the beautiful poetry today, all of the salawat and the praise and mm -hmm. everything that was shared. I just, I'm so humbled and so honored to be with all of you poets here. Absolutely. And for everyone watching, don't forget to get your copy of A Kaleidoscope of Stories, this <laughs> magnanimous <laughs> book of poetry. I really highly recommend it to everybody. It's, it's, um, it's an epic moment, I think, in our history yeah, as 
British, you know, I keep saying British, English speaking poets. I'm not excluding the Americans <laughs> and the South Africans. And we are Australia. here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. There are many accents. <laughs> English speaking, multi accented poets. I'm super honored that we've been able to just be gathered in this way. So for those watching, make sure you get your copy. And just and look I at all these like squares together we really are a beautiful kaleidoscope <laughs> right and Thank uh you for putting, it's such a beautiful effort you all it really it's so beautiful what you've done yeah so much effort mashallah and rabia you should be very proud of yourself you've done a great job and I'm, i know it can't have been easy working with this many poets oh my god poets <laughs> <laughs> so many poets so many creative spiritual sufi muslim types i mean poor you <laughs> bless you may i like that's everything you've done alhamdulillah uh, and thank you all of you because you are what has has made the book what it is alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair for thank everyone you. tuning in and as always this video will still be remaining and we'll see you next time inshallah